Well, well. Look who's been promoted. And what is it, Roy? A case of service manager to file clerk in one easy lesson? Oh, hi there, Tech. No, no promotion. Just checking the service customer file to find out who needs a service reminder. Now take this traveling salesman, Mr. Lorimer. According to the file, he hasn't been in for... Well, I'd better see what that customer wants. Why, Mr. Lorimer, glad to see you. I was just about to call your office and remind you we were still in business. Oh, I knew you boys were in business, all right. But I've already got my reminder. Yeah? What seems to be the matter? Wish I knew. But it sounds like I'm keeping a couple of beehives in the back end of the car somewhere. <laughs> well, there's one sure way to find out. Let's just take a little ride so you can point out the noise. Okay by me. Want to drive? No, you drive. Because you know how to make this noise show up. Then I'd like to drive so I can test the car under different conditions and make my diagnosis. Now on this smooth road in this quiet neighborhood, we'll be able to tell if you've been hearing an axle noise. Tires make a steady hum through all speed ranges. And if there are other noises... Wait, wait a minute. Hey, hear that? That's what I was talking about. Hmm. Let's see you bring in that noise again. Well, it sounds like the rear axle gear's all right, but we'll have to take the axle down to check the actual condition. Let me drop you off at your office, then I'll get back to the shop. And what's more, Frank, I noticed the noise mostly on the pull and a little on the coast. Okay, Roy. One more thing, Frank. Take that young fella Don with you and kind of show him the ropes, okay? What? You want this car today, don't you? Ah, uh, Frank, relax. Don's seen an axle before. Just covered the important points. It won't take any longer to explain as you go along. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Come on, Don, give me a hand on this axle job. And there's what Tech and I noticed, Frank. See that grease sprayed up on the floorboards? Yep. That lubricant must have gotten by the pinion oil seal. Uh, no wonder the axle began to sound off. I'll bet it hasn't got enough lubricant to grease a scooter. Right. And, Don, besides the pinion oil seal, we'd better check the wheel seals, gaskets, bolts, and wells on the housing. So, as soon as you get the outside washed, pull the carrier out, wipe it off, and let me know when you've got it mounted in that repair stand. Okay, Frank, I'll get right on. Well, here's the carrier check, but like I said, the way this differential works is something I've never understood. Well, why don't you ask Frank to explain it? Okay. Say, Frank, I understand how power gets to the rear axle. And I know the pinion turns the ring gear. But what are these differential gears to? Well, the differential has two main jobs to do. It transmits engine power to the rear axle shafts. And it divides that power so each wheel gets an equal share. In other words, it lets one rear wheel turn faster than the other when going around a corner or over bumps or even when tire air pressures are different. If you can visualize how every gear in the differential goes around, you'll find the differential a lot easier to fix. For example, take these two differential side gears. The splined ends of the axle shafts fit in them, and the wheels go on the outer ends of the shaft, right? Right. Okay. And notice that the differential case is mounted in the carrier on two roller bearings. They let the case turn freely around the axles. And inside the differential case is a small shaft called a differential pinion shaft. Mounted on that shaft are two other gears, the differential pinions. These pinions fit in between the two side gears and mesh with both. The ring gear is bolted solidly to the differential case and meshes with the drive pinion. Right. So you see, Don, whenever the ring gear revolves, it carries the case with it and at the same speed. I see. Same speed, because the gear is bolted to the case. Uh-huh. Fine. Now, suppose this car was going straight ahead on a smooth road. The wheels would turn at the same speed, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sure. All right. Now, you know as the ring gear turns, the case turns with it, carrying the pinions around. But because the rolling radius of each wheel is the same... The gears inside the case don't turn on one another. 
The pinions just connect the two side gears together, and the whole nest of gears turns like one solid unit. I get it. But what happens when you hold one wheel so it won't turn? What's that do to the differential? Just this, my boy. The case turns with the ring gear carrying the pinions. But since one wheel is held, its axle gear is also standing still. So the pinions got to turn. That's because the pinions meshed with a stationary side gear. But the pinions, of course, can turn on their own shaft. In other words, Don, the pinions just run round the stationary gear. Wait a minute. What's the other side gear doing while that happens? Well, the other side gear is meshed with the pinions, too, and is being turned the same as it was before on the straightaway. Now, besides that, the side gear's being turned faster because the pinions are now turning on their shaft. This extra speed is in addition to the speed of the case. So, when one wheel is held, that's what makes the free axle turn exactly twice as fast as it would on a straightaway. And that's why a terrific load is put on the differential when the car gets stuck in the mud. And sometimes a tooth or a large chip may be knocked off a side gear, and the owner notices a slight thump when he turns a corner. Okay, Frank, okay. Now tell me what happens in the differential when both wheels are turning, one faster than the other, when that car does go around the corner. Well, look at it this way. The inside wheel goes a shorter distance than the outside wheel. The side gear on the inside shaft, then, will turn slower than the differential case. The pinions have to turn on their own shaft, so they roll around the slower moving gear. And add to the speed of the gear, which drives the outside wheel. That outside wheel, then, receives an increase in speed equal to the amount the inside wheel loses. I think I'm catching on. But I better study it a little more. Now you're cooking, Don. And this reference book will help. It's also got the complete story on how to tell the difference between axle noises and other noises. Yeah, there are a lot of noises that can be confused with axle noise. The more axle jobs you do, the easier you'll notice the difference. But let's turn the record over and talk about those noises. Actually, Don, there are three main axle noises to tune your ear to. First, there's gear noise on a pull which usually means the gears are scored due to improper adjustment or the wrong kind of lubricant. But do the gears ever fail because they're too soft? No, soft gears are just out of the question. Each gear is hardened and thoroughly tested. In fact, soft gears wouldn't work at all. They'd score up so badly in just a few miles that the axle couldn't even operate. Now, the second noise to listen for is a gear noise on a coast. This, too, means scored gears and is caused by excessive end play in the pinion bearings, which lets the pinion move out of adjustment. And third, there's a bearing noise on pull and coast. It's a sizzling, gravelly kind of noise. Yeah. Sometimes you'll find the rear pinion bearings scored, chipped, cracked, badly worn, or loose. Tell me, Frank, what would cause a bearing to fail? No lubricant or an improper adjustment. For example, when the pinion bearings are adjusted too tight, the bearings burn up. When adjustment's too loose, the bearings will pound to pieces and cause noisy gears. And the pinion bearings will go before the differential bearings will, right? Yes, sir. That's because the pinion bearings turn about four times as fast as the differential bearings, due to the rear axle ratio of about four to one. But when the rear axle runs dry, it's the gears that generally go first. So let's look at the gear teeth. Uh-oh, Frank. See that? Yeah, those teeth are pretty badly scored. That's what caused the noise. And notice that they're scored on the drive side and a little on the coast side. That checks with what Roy said about the noise. Golly, loose pinion bearings are running out of lubricant. Ain't no picnic. It's murder, Don. And don't forget, you can also get a rough massage on those gears if the wrong kind of lubricant's put in. Yeah, Tech's right, Don. Always use a high-quality, hypoid lubricant. If there's any doubt about the lube that's in the axle, drain and refill with lubricant you know is right. You better tell Don about preloading the bearings, Frank. That's important to axle life and quiet operation. Oh, yeah. Uh, these hypoid gears are matched and lapped in pairs, Don. That means they're run in together when they're made. So you should always use them in matched sets. You can't expect a good, quiet job unless you use a matched set. 
And to hold the gears in position under load, you have to set the bearings up tight. In other words, you put a load on those bearings. That's called preloading. The preload keeps the pinion from walking backward or forward under load, which in turn keeps the tooth contact where it belongs. Well, isn't that preload kind of rough on the bearings? Nope. Actually, it's good for them. Right, Frank? Right. These are tapered roller bearings, Don. They're supposed to run under a thrust load. If they ran loose, the rollers would tend to work out of alignment. Preloading them and turning the bearings at the same time lines up the rollers on the race. And that way, the bearings last longer. Well, how do you control the load? With shims, Don, between the front bearing and spacer. I'll show you just how it's done when we put this job together. And don't forget that those differential bearings are also preloaded. You're going to show down that, Frank? Yeah, when we put it back together. But let's get back to this job. You know, if Lorimer were able to bring his car in here for lubrication regularly, we'd have noticed the leak. Could have saved him a lot of dough. Now he's going to need new gears. However, Don, we've got to take this job down to see how the other parts really are. Roy says you've disassembled an axle before, so you won't forget to pull the pinion flange first. If you take the ring gear and case out first, there's nothing to back up the pinion when you pull out the oil seal. And you'll use this special puller to pull out the pinion shaft oil seal. You know why you shouldn't dig it out with a chisel, don't you? Yep. The chisel might slip and nick the housing. That could cause a permanent grease leak. Oh, why do you need that center punch? That's a witch's witch tool, my boy. <laughs> yeah. Before you remove the bearing caps, mark each cap and bearing support. And then you'll know which is which, and you'll get them back in the way they were before. But they look the same. Are you sure they're not interchangeable? Positive. Them caps are married to the housing. That's because those bearing supports are bored with the caps in place when the axle's made. And keep those bearing adjusting shims together, Don. Then when we stick in the new pinion, those shims will tell us where to start out or what new combinations to use. Okay, Frank. I better start taking this carrier apart. While you're at it, clean every part, then oil it lightly to prevent rust. Now, I'm going to check with the parts department, but I'll be right back. Well, here you are, Frank. I scrubbed and oiled every part in the works. Well, besides the gears, how do the other parts look? Oh, brother, the pinion bearings got so hot they turned black and blue. Ah, uh, too bad. That means we'll need two new ones. When bearings turn blue, they lose their hardness. That makes them practically worthless. Well, it's usually smart to put in new pinion bearings anyway. Then you'll have a job that won't jump up and bite you after a few thousand miles. Another thing, Don. When driving out pinion bearing cups, be careful not to damage the bearing thrust surfaces inside the carrier. If they're damaged, the preload won't be right. Now, Don, since you've got the ring gear off the differential case, how do the differential parts look? Why, I, I guess they're all right. You guess. Now, look, my friend. You gotta use two feeler blades to be sure. Yeah, you'll need a feeler blade on both sides of the hub so the gear won't tilt. There should be four to twelve thousandths between each side gear and thrust washer. If there's too much play, inspect each differential part for wear. Sometimes new washers are all that's needed. But when you put new washers in, check the clearance again. If it's still too high, inspect the gears, case, and pinion shaft for excessive wear. The shaft shouldn't be grooved, and it ought to be a light, dry fit in the case. If not, the shaft or the case is worn and needs replacing. Well, this job needs a shaft and washers, but how come differential clearance is important? Well, if there's too much play, this job will clunk every time Lorimer starts or stops. I see. Now, what do you suppose made the shaft and washers wear so much? Well, Lorimer probably got stuck in mud, snow, or sand. One spinning wheel puts a terrific load on these parts. And incidentally, check the differential case for runout within three thousandths. If a piece of metal fell into the gears, knocking off some teeth, the case might be sprung. The back face of the ring gear shouldn't have more than four thousandths runout either. So make the same check when you bolt that ring gear to the case. How do the differential bearings check out? Well, they look pretty good. I clean them and look for rough ends on the bearing rollers or a worn thrust rib. Looks like the differential bearings have got a lot of miles left. Yeah, Frank. Both differential cones, cups, and races are good. And none of the rollers have flat spots. Who says I got flat spots? 
Not you, boss. Not even these differential bearings, according to Don and Tech. Fine. How's that job coming along? Well, first of all, Mr. Lorimer needs a new ring gear set, pinion bearings, oil seal, a new differential pinion shaft, and thrust washers. Then, of course, we'll probably need new shims and an adjusting washer when we set up the new gears. Uh, just a minute, fellas. That's really where I come in. How to use those shims to set up the pinion and ring gear to operate a long time, quietly, is a mighty important story. You bet it is. And Don better know about that, too. Sure, Frank. And I think all the rest of the fellows will want to hear that story, because I've got something special that'll really open their eyes. It's a new gauge that takes the guesswork out of setting up an axle. So I'll be back soon with the story on putting this job together. It's one you won't want to miss. <laughs> <laughs>